Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Wednesday to you all. My name is Kyle Corvus Crow. I'm joined today by Jeff Zeta Schnur as we got a little bit of a Southern showdown cooking up here in our Collegiate League of Legends season. And it's a varsity match, first one of the season that we'll be watching, so a lot of fun there. It is, of course, going to be Kennesaw State University, the Owls, trying to take on a perennial playoff contender for the Southern region, George Mason University. And what that means is we are going to get into it as soon as we possibly can. But keep in mind that GMU, George Mason, is sitting at a very nice 6-0 and zero in game scores. They've got themselves three very, I would say, convincing wins. Right. right? Then, you know, relatively clean play from them. They took down Alberta. Um, has been, you know, chasing those playoffs recently. Um, St. Clair and New Mexico State all down as well all two O's, and Kansas State, uh, perennial favorites of our other co-caster here. Uh, they're at a 2-0 and zero match score with 4-0 and zero game score. So we shall see which of these two teams is going to take their first loss of the season as we try to load into Champion Select. Absolutely, and, you know, they share a common opponent there in New Mexico State, both 2-0 in them, so we'll see how that all does set itself up. But right now... We've got the picks and bands ready. It is Kennesaw State over on the blue side starting game number one. George Mason will be the red side now. Some For those of you that would uh, would remember from last year, uh, George Mason, a couple roster changes it looks like here. Uh, Enrique, Firefly, and Io seem to be the returning names. So unless there's been a name change, GGWTF and Rylast are new additions to the roster here. So... Excited to see what these guys will maybe be bringing to the table. The Kennesaw State team has been playing together for a while. I recognize the names Havoc, Vanquish, and Body Fear Beast. Fear I'm shines. not sure if they are off or DKC here. So we'll see just uh, just how these guys do stack up. I'm especially curious about the KSU bot lane because I know Enrique is a huge threat on the side of this George Mason University roster. He used to be supported by someone named Alex, who was, as far as I know, one of Collegiate League of Legends' only women uh, participants. So, and, uh, I mean, she was ferociously good. High Diamond, Low Master, I think. Um, and, uh, and so, swapped out support now for Rylast. We'll see exactly how this change does come in. But the bands want to touch on here. We got Camille, Victor, and Sivir off the table for Kennesaw State. Just strong picks all together. It's Azir, Kane, and Zillion taken out with the Irelia first pick now over on Havoc. And I think the Irelia first pick isn't bad at all, right? Like, if you have Irelia, um, you're pretty much getting a guaranteed flex in toward either the mid or the top. And it's never a bad pick. You know, you always have kill pressure, you always have a win condition, you always have that late game. And it's just a guaranteed kind of strong almost power pick some would say mm. with very few counter so obviously good to pick up early in the draft ergot as well a very strong champion but unlike the aurelia a lot less mobility so if he does get ganked he has a much tougher spot to actually get out of the ganks we shall see if that is you know gonna be an issue right melee junglers tend to really demolish ergot they tend to put a big spike thorn in his plans uh, Xin Zhao especially, I think, is one of the toughest things for him to deal with, especially because she ganks so incredibly early, but with Camille off the table, that's one of two early ganking melee junglers gone. So Zin would be the only one that's actually left that they're able to take. Urgot pick up something we've seen a lot of, something that's definitely in flavor right now. The Recon early on into this draft is, is interesting for me. That's going to show a little bit of what they're hoping to do in this bottom lane, and DKC... You know, quick to answer to that one says, look, if that's the case, I'm just going to pick the Morgana early, not give away too much of our strategy. It's a safe pick. It can do a lot to negate both this Urgot and the Rakan just with the Black Shield there. Wouldn't be surprised to see Body of These Fools go ahead and select the AD for Aeroth here, but Scion something on the table as well that they may just not want to pass up, so they will go ahead and lock that in. And that'll round out the first three for Kennesaw. We'll see what George Mason decides to answer back with here because... You're starting to see the, the, the bare bones of this composition now. Usually, you know, you see a jungler picked very early uh, as opposed to the solo laners. Now we got both solo laners in the support, so it's, it's jungle and AD likely for the roles of Kennesaw State here. They're just going to end up 
fleshing out with that Aatrox, and now we're, we're back into the second round of bands. Second round of bands. After, <clears throat> after the Aatrox pick, obviously we're probably going to see Aatrox mid and the Urgot top, but Urgot top doesn't do fantastically into Scion. Scion actually is able to bully him quite early, and if you're quite comfortable on the Scion matchup, you can actually straight solo kill the Urgot pre-level 9 or so before he gets that first item under his belt. So what the side of GMU want to do now is they want to try and remove all of the power junglers that could be picked up by Kennesaw. You know, they need to get all of these melee picks off the table that they aren't going to actually select because they do have first pick coming back. So Xin Zhao, an obvious possibility. The Nocturne, still extremely dangerous. There are a couple other things, right? The Gragas has been, you know, it's been making some waves, but it hasn't been controlling the game. So, we shall see if that's actually going to make a huge difference. With their fifth and final ban, though, I expect this to go towards the jungle. Just pinch that pool even further and get Firefly, something he's really comfortable on, but they're actually going to ban out the Lucian instead. So, recognizing that they're trading something for this jungler, they're going to take out the strongest AD in the early game from this draft phase. Yeah, they know they've already got the Morgana locked in there. And with the Zaya off the table, they obviously have a secondary backup pick in mind. Possibly one that's punished pretty heavily by the Lucian there. So Jin taken off the table as well. We won't get to see Enrique play that one. There's three ADs banned against one of George Mason's you know, more prolific carries here. So with the clock taken down, I would not be surprised to see him go ahead and pick up the AD that he wants here and now. It's it's the only power pick left, right? He had to pick the AD here because if he doesn't and gives over Kaista, then they just lose the jungle pick, right? They give jungle for AD. Is that worth it? Probably not in the current meta. You can make a lot more of the junglers work. And after the top three or four of the AD pool are banned, right? The Kaisa, the Jin, the Lucian, even the Zaya, supremely powerful in that 5v5 scenario. Then you start saying, okay, well, with all of those gone, what is really left? And the thing that's left is um, some of the more unorthodox picks, some of the more solo queue-esque things. The Heimerdinger will be the selection. It is incredibly good at dealing with some of these engaged champs, the Rakan to be specific, and it outbursts the Kaisa when she actually dies the team. So we'll see if Aeroth can actually make this pick work. I think it's a fantastic pick into the current composition. My only worry is that they won't have enough late game damage, right? Against Kindred, Kaisa, Urgot, Aatrox. Right. right. I mean, it's just not enough order. damage, right? You have to rely on your Irelia. Your Irelia has to be the one 1v9ing because your team as a whole has two carries and barely two carries. The Time Redinger and it's Irelia. The Morgana, the Nunu, and the Scion are purely CC champions after about the 30 minute mark. So we'll have to see Kennesaw get to either a huge Irelia or just try and close the game out when their tanks spike to be extremely big and not give over enough kills so that GMU could actually get started. All right, we'll see You know what, what all does come of that one. That's a very interesting... You, you mentioned late game, and we're not in a meta that exactly uh, encourages late game. It's not something we see a ton of these days. I mean, you, you do get the occasional slog fests that go out, you know, 30-plus minutes, but... There's really no surprises. If a game gets to about the 35-minute mark, that's when we're expecting it to end these days, right? So we'll see whether or not that's something that uh, that is likely as we do get ready for the players to go ahead and get on into game here. Game number one, of course, between George Mason and Kennesaw State. As it looks like we are ready to toss that up on your screen. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. So on the blue side... To reiterate, that is Kennesaw State. We're going to give them the introduction. It's Havoc in the top lane. Vanquish in the jungle. Body those fools in the mid lane. And Aroth and DKC rounding out the bot side. Meanwhile, over on the side of George Mason, who is taken to the red side of your screen, is Ion in the top. Firefly. GGWTF. GG for short. In that mid lane. Enrique and Rylast rounding out the bottom as these teams are all just... Fairly content to just draw the line of scrimmage here. Nobody wants to go too far. Nobody wants to make that early game play that ends in the explosive level one deficit that's so hard to claw back from. Especially, I don't think you want to give that up to this Kennesaw roster right now. Because you can get an early kill onto just any of these guys, and your life is going to be hell. Well, not any of them. If you get it onto specifically 
the Aurelia, things are awful, right? You just basically have lost a huge portion of your game plan at that point. Because what needs to happen is you need the Irelia to not get large. If the Irelia doesn't get large, this game is extremely straightforward for GMU, right? All they have to do is scale up until they have two items and walk down a lane. As soon as they walk down a lane, they put Recon ult down and they just kill everybody. They have so much damage that it won't matter if they don't have a front line because nobody will be tanky enough at that 16 to 20 minute mark. Either way, it's not going to be the start that they're looking for. Both junglers opting to start with their red buffs, so will be likely the bottom lane aggression earlier from Firefly, something that he could be looking for. He wants to actually potentially make a gank in the top lane. It looks like he might have tried to, try to invade the blue, but could just actually be looking for Scion right here very early on. We'll see whether or not that is the case. As, yeah, he's coming in on it, Havoc, level one still, but just has time to walk away. Red buff going to do a little bit of harass there, but not too bad. All things will equal out as they return, and now Firefly needs to make a decision on how to get back on track with this jungle, because that's going to give Vanquish a little bit of time to just keep power farming through things. Meanwhile, mid lane, body these fools, really just getting oh, pressured no. by GGWTF. That is the flash. They're going to be burned, traded out for the ignite, but definitely going to be worth it, and careful here, because actually Firefly is not too far off. We might try to find some kind of dive here. I, I just really doubt it, but... Something have to be aware of, especially with no flash on this immobile area. I mean, you'd have to think they want to dive the Aurelia, right? If they put the Aurelia behind, the game's over. You know, all they need to do at that point is just maintain the gold advantage going into the middle of the game. And then it's... So, in that sense, it's actually a very, very relaxed state of mind. All they have to do, get one kill, get one pressured kill. They already got the ignite. They just have to find that second dive. Tricky, yeah, I mean, the, the flash is gone off the body of those fools, so really nowhere to run, only under a tower to hide. It's a good ward I like left there by Firefly, because that means they're pretty much going to be able, I believe that ward's in distance to spot out uh, body of those fools if he's trying to back behind his own tower line there. So I like what I'm seeing from that. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, here's that shove out. We talked about Aeroth being potentially strong on this Heimer Dinger. I mean, these fools are biting off more than you can do. Look at that. Just goes in without flash. And really just suffers for it. Wow, what a first blood coming out for George Mason. Clearly taken away by GG. Why are those fools severely underestimating his opponent? Now, if this were solo queue, you'd see the uh, open mid come down and chat instantly Dang. right there. Because it's just all but over. But there is a chance in case you can get back in this if they can find the soul kills on the Aatrox if they can win the top lane or the bottom lane it would be a path for them to get back into this game but if they don't again we mentioned the win condition is shutting down Irelia they've already gotten one of the kills if GMU gets a second or a third they've basically accomplished their goal and all they have to do at that point is farm out and wait until they get a couple of items and then just walk together as a team we'll see whether or not that's a possibility for them here it is only just the first blood all other CS relatively even, except for almost a 10 CS deficit in this top lane here. But if there's any consolation prize, a Mountain Drake might just be it. That is the power of new new Vanquish here. Intelligently taking that early dragon, knowing that, hey, there's a good chance Firefly's not around for Firefly action. So we've not seen a ton of activity out of since that first attempted gank. Kind of gone back to a more passive, hard farming style in this jungle, so... I knew they had the vision around it, knew that it was probably a pretty safe bet, and there's always the flash to get over the wall if not, so Vanquish hedging his bets on that one and, and getting the payoff that now and then. See how well it goes for him. DKC wants a little bit of this action and body these fools, still without the flash. This is bad news for him. He's pulled right back in, and Firefly is going to get that kill. They wanted to give it over to GGWTF maybe, but could have just been a small misstep. Could have said, hey, look, we got to secure this flash or not. Just make sure this one goes straight into the bank. And now this frees up actually the, the, the mid jungle of George Mason to potentially roam down. No dragon to take, but I think this one's going to get smelled out pretty quickly by Aeroth and DKC. Yeah, after you see a gank like that, you've got to be aware of the fact that they can actually uh, absolutely walk down on you. And because it's Kindred, she wants to, right? The more kills she gets early, the better the game is for her. All she needs to do is get that early kind of snowball, and she turns into a nearly unstoppable champion. So. As far as early game goes, two kills 
for GMU's win condition. That's really, really good as of this point, right? And a two-threat comp. If one of your threats doesn't actually do anything, it becomes a one-threat comp. So, for GMU to take the two-threat composition and reduce it to a single threat, which is only a Heimerdinger that is dodgeable in terms of his damage, unlike the Aurelia, which is, you know, auto-attack, we've been in our fights, super durable as well, um, it becomes a lot more manageable with finding land. And they're not going to go on it, right? No turrets to follow up, even if they did land more CC, just didn't have the damage to kill. Yeah, this aggression actually maintaining from the side because I stayed in the spot lane, but they ran themselves out of mana on the AROC, and that's not something you can do when playing this high or bottom. Now, Body these Schools actually trying to trade back some aggression. Look at this. He's going to go in for it, but that's not even going to get the passive there. As GGWTF just comes out by the skin of his teeth on another 1v1, the Body these Schools opted into the trade of Ignites. Made it all work out for the mid laner of George Mason, and that's just gotta be devastating. Body these fools, all three deaths of Kennesaw State right now. This is a terrible position to be in at only seven minutes. Yeah, it's looking pretty grim as of this point, and not to mention, they're all on the mid laner, the one that had to be ahead, the one that had to be super, super large in order to scale, in order to make this game easy, Kennesaw State. And it's just kind of a sign that GMU, they really not only know, oh, Okay, the noodles aren't, they're, they're not fully cooked yet, so we're fine. Um, but it's really a sign that GMU knows exactly what they have to do to win the game, right? The Nunu, mid lane 2v2. Yeah, no one wants to find this one. They're trying to get something back into this mid lane. That's going to be a full ultimate popped off, and they get WTF down, but it does cost another death for Body Those Fools. Doesn't matter because it is a double kill now for Vanquish. He'll get something back on the board for Kennesaw State, but that is the fourth death for Irelia here in the mid lane. Body These Fools looking bodied a little bit himself. I think they're going to call that one worth. It's a two for one. The assist does come down, sure, but that's two assists now back in the hands of Body These Fools. The kill goes yeah, back over to Kindred. Kills back in his hands. That would be fantastic, yeah. right? Then you look and you say, okay, Maybe we can come back, maybe we can actually do stuff. Because the kills were given over and just assists were, he's still quite far behind, right? He's behind in XP, he's behind in gold. He needs a lot more than just that to get back into the game. So we'll have to wait and see, right? He's going to have a very difficult time still dueling the Aatrox. But with the Nunu, maybe they can make something happen, right? That was a very good gank. If they can find a second one of those, if they can put the Aatrox maybe a bit more behind, uh, it's possible Body of Those Fools can actually get back into this. I mean, you can really never count out Nyrelia. That's one champion that even if she just stays par for the course, not too far behind. Hang on, we'll get to that in a second. Aroth getting dumped on in the bottom lane here, flashes out, but Enrique's right on his tail. There's Rylas keeping up as well, but has the health bar so low he has to run away. Now, meanwhile, Firefly right there to make it happen, and Enrique picks up his first kill of the match. Now, Vanquish here trying to start something back, trying to get this kill on a Firefly so DKC can get out of here in one piece. I think he's going to be able to at least save his support, but whether or not this is something they can continue to pressure out, it does look a little tricky. The Binding not connecting the Dark Tormented Soil, not there, and the Black Shield just on the edge of working, and just like that, it's another one picked up by the skin of the team, George Mason. Jungler finding the third kill there, Firefly, lighting up the way for his team. Six kills on the board already, I mean, we talked about the fact that Kennesaw needed a game where they got ahead in order to win. This is not one of those games, right? This is GMU just taking full advantage of their aggressive comp and trying to win off of that. I really am missing the stun again, cannot land anything onto this Aatrox. And even if she does, the duels just haven't been going in her favor either. So yeah, GMU in a very, very commanding lead as of right now, this game number one, is just looking like it's not a foregone conclusion, but certainly a very, very difficult road. It's not a battle, all things considered, especially if Body these fools. Oh they no! Successfully dove under tower, and you know maybe had a chance to get away from that one. And I don't know if that's just a, the panic button being pressed a little bit there. He knew something we didn't. But either way, giving GGWTF another kill there in the mid lane. Two to seven doesn't look so bad on the scoreboard, but when you consider the distribution here, it becomes a tremendous mountain to have to come over here. And Kansas State poised to take another mountain drake, provided they can hold off Rylas coming in here. But at what point is the mountain drake really not worth it when you should be helping find ganks on the map and you should be getting roams and really focus on shutting down this Aatrox? 
Going in for the big boom. Does not find what it needs to do. DKC so low. A stiff breeze would knock him over at this point. And all parties are promptly going to exit the lane, saying, you know what, that uh, left us all in a little worse shape than we may have thought. Vanquish probably didn't have the HP to do a full dive, at least not with the a rock back in the cooldowns. But now they're actually trying to come back around between the towers. This is what he wants to find, but he will find three of them as GG is there to make sure this happens as well. Enrique does go down. Vanquish doing what he can to keep his team alive in this game, but he's going to have to retreat. a rock and Body these fools are there, but is it enough? They want to find the 2v2, but the GG is so strong right now. Both mid laners are going to stick to the ADs. Actually, it's support from right last. a rock trying to get out of here. Actually does so. But now Body these fools up the creek without a paddle. Can he get back through the tower? It looks tricky, but he just may have made it happen. Havoc in the meantime, getting dove under the top, and there's no chance he comes out of this one in one piece. And Firefly takes the kill away to return it. It's another one for the jungler. Four and four as this jungle in mid seems to be an even step. And now Rift Herald getting something into the top lane. The first tower going to go down for sure now. George Mason will pick that one up with the apples. Should second turret as well, I mean. Who's the first person to contest it? It's going to be Nunu and then a Heimerdinger. This is still very tough to defend from, even without there being a second uh, person in the lane. Right, no jungler. Oh, but it is Nunu. Yep. The consume means no second charge, probably. Yeah, they do get it down before any <laughs> real problems happen, so... Losing the tower is going to hurt, especially that mid lane tower already poised to get knocked down here. Bad news for Bobby those fools as he tries to go in and does try to think twice about it. The teleport actually coming out from Io. We'll see what about he makes if he's getting into this fight. KSU actually wants to fight, but going in. The soul shackles are coming down, but DKC dies before they pop up. He is Havoc is doing the best to turn it around though, and Rylax going to die as well. KSU flipping the fight here. Io on the way out, and I don't think he's going to be able to make it. It's been a double kill now for Havoc in the top lane, and now a double kill for Body These Fools. And just like that, they flip it back on its head. GGWTF, the strongest member of George Mason, nowhere to be found for that fight. And it's a fight that George Mason wanted when they teleported in with Ion. So a great punish by the Owls of Kennesaw State. We'll see how much they can take off of this. Well, they would need to get something a little bit more than what they have, right? They've already downed two turrets. They've only taken one. So if they can get a second outer, this would be fantastic. They do have double mountain in order to take it with. Uh, that increased their siege damage by quite a lot, but the Aatrox is behind them. I don't know if they know where GGWTF is, but they certainly have to be careful because look at this. He's starting to wrap on Nunu. Yeah, Vanquish, he's found himself in a bad position. Now GG doing what he can. That's a snowball to try to get out of that one, but it's only going to go over to the Aatrox yet again as... One fight, a comeback does not make. Build this into anything. 14 minutes on the clock. We have two towers already down. Build those in. Look fairly comfortable just resetting on this tower. Just resetting and getting to where they need to be on this siege. The problem is currently their wave clear. Not in the position it needs to be in. Kennesaw State shredding these minions, making it a little harder for this lane to push without something like, say, the Rift Herald in that top lane. Without, you know, the absentee uh, just wave bouncing that we saw kind of build up in the bottom lane from Enrique and Rylas there. Whether or not they can find more. Yeah, that's been... It's been pretty hard for GMU to actually maintain siege on any of these turrets, right? Their composition is so heavily balanced around the fact that they're going to 5 versus 5 you, and they're going to do with their double AD carries. But by the time they get to turrets, uh, the minions are gone. They have no way to actually hit the turret because there's nothing from them to actually stand behind as the turret hits things. And this will be a good pickup. It's the last outer to get. It's the middle one as well. Super important. They can think about going in. Yeah, they just actually want enough time to take the tower down, so they will do that. It's actually going to be Rylas that gets the damning shot onto that tower, and now the entirety of the outer portion of the map is broken open for GMU. We'll see whether or not they feel a little bit more comfortable fighting here, because Vanquish is still a terror for his team. He's actually starting to get the face of the opponent a little bit. 
as well. The fight is breaking out. Rylax is in, out just as quickly as he can, but look at that body of those fools is in on him, sticking to it. It's the mid trader for the support, and that's not good for Kennesaw. Vanquish on his last threat as well. Aroth trying to stay alive in this one. Fire Blind and Rike are all over that. Meanwhile, Havoc does go down in the back line as well, just trying to pass him out on this. But Firefly is going to be out safely. Ion is going to be out safely. DKC, the only remaining member for Kennesaw. And we'll see how long that lasts because the binding does not save from the last connecting shot. And it is a one for five that comes out at the end of the day. All born on the back of body. Those fools going in a little too hard for Rylas there in the back line and getting severely punished. What does come out as an ace, but... No real objective is going to be able to be taken off of this before the spawns come back from Kennesaw. Yeah, and that's kind of been the state of this game, you know. Somebody might win a fight, and sure, you know, you won the fight, but death timers are still really short. It's not even 17 minutes yet, so nobody can actually get anything with all the advantages that they have been taking. That being said, right, the gold lead's already at 6k. It's getting a little worrisome if you're a KSU fan, because... George Mason already has most of their super important items, and they've got themselves, you know, a pretty good path to just straight winning. If they keep winning fights, they can keep winning objectives, but they're going to contest this mountain, the third one of the game. Yeah, I'd love to have the third mountain. They do get it, but how big of a deal is it going to be here? They need something a little bit more potent to hold out through these fights, and it's already Aeroth down. DK seems to be the next one to fall, and I don't know if George Mason can continue this one or not. Just on merit of chasing too far, but they've done this without Enrique. He's already running back to the mid lane just to reset the pressure here, and GG can just push this so heavily. Firefly as well, these guys are such huge damage threats, sitting at seven and eight kills apiece. I mean, just devastating numbers for this George Mason roster. They're not afraid to push the tower. They're not afraid to dive. Io, the they'll take the aggro. They want to find that they're channeling with low zero. It's going to be a lot to deal with, but not enough, as Vanquish does get vanquished himself here. Now Rylast. Trying to reset on this tower aggro, and they take about four, three too many shots, and wow, Rylast almost dead on that one, but the minions are back in the position now, and George Mason can reset this siege, already pressuring in the mid lane here, though it is getting proxied out by bodies and the pools. That's a big root up, but the cavalry is there, and Aeroth uh... actually finds it on just the end. A little bit of a mistake by Rylast to wander back into there. That is the fourth death for this support. You know, that's a role you can usually say, hey, you know what, I'm sacrificing to get my team out. If, if anyone has to die, it should be me. But you didn't have to die there, right, last. I mean, that's been the case a lot, right? If it's GMB's one weakness, it's that they've given away quite a few kills where they just didn't need to, you know? And that does happen. It's, it's not super worrisome, though, because they still are maintaining a very large gold advantage while doing so. But if this game was closer, this would be very worrisome. So what I would say is, if they want to clean up their play for a couple more times, they should take a look at these fights and say, okay, you know, where are we really giving up our kills and why? You know, what are we gaining for these deaths? If we're not gaining anything, just leave, just walk away. You know, you don't actually need to take those kinds of fights. And that happened a couple times in the mid lane as well, right? Oop, Urgot, he wants a piece of this Heimerdinger action. And no power to dive back under too. That's absolutely a death for DKC. Aeroth. Probably not getting out of this one either. Look at this. DG is going to take that one for himself. Feels pretty good about it. Now Vanquish. Battle of the Jungle is definitely going to Firefly. And it's even on Vanquish's home turf. Says you have nowhere to hide. Now this is the George Mason side of the map. We have annexed it and there's nothing we can do. They just need to keep more minions pouring in here. Because that has been somewhat of a struggle all game long now. Find themselves. This tower is going to go down for sure. I don't believe Body of Those Fools or Havoc can really do anything to stop that at this point. I own. Flip the top lane to the bot side. No huge surprises there. A bit of a traditional lane swap aesthetic that we're seeing right now, especially with George Mason's bot lane pushing out the top and the top lane pushing out the bot. I think they're going to just reset here. They're happy to take the towers. Baron coming yeah. up in just a second here. I mean, it's right on the board. There are three Mountain Drakes for Kennesaw if they wanted to attempt to sneak here in the get you know, a wake of this back, but I think Firefly is staying pretty vigilant there. It's gonna smell. Now this they've one already out. started the TP. This could be a fight if they really wanted to take mm -hmm. so, but the binding's gonna miss. Yeah, they really that need means to get KSU. Firefly there. 
Yeah, if they got the catch, it'd be huge, right? They already have themselves a Nunu. They could absolutely take this fight, but they have to stay alive for it. Well, the fight's coming, whether or not they're gonna take it. Firefly is there, and that's the legendary already. As GG picks up the first one, that's gonna be another one slain. That's body those fools out of that fight before you even stand a chance. Look how hard the time on Firefly. And Aeon wants to fight it, but look, he's so low, it doesn't matter. It's a triple kill for Ion. And Firefly trades back, swaps out with Aeroth there. And just like that, they are aced out of this map. Kennesaw State Outlaws are going to lose the Baron and potentially quite a few more towers. This is a very healthy Torch Mason. They're not going to need to back after taking this Baron very likely. Yeah, and the Death Timers, while they are short and these guys are going to come up, they can't take the fight, right? If these guys back or not back, it doesn't really matter, actually. They couldn't take that fight even anywhere close to what they need to be able to do. And it's just a considerable lack of damage, right? They don't have an ability to kill these guys. They're just getting walked at, and because of the fact that it's Aatrox and Urgot and Rakan, you have so much CC and so much damage, including the Kindred and the Kaisa from range, that you just can't withstand them. And that's really been the problem, you know? If you don't have the damage to kill them, and you don't have the tankiness to not die, uh, there's not much you can actually do about it. The Heimerdinger severely lacking in damage at this point, as we can see, and I don't know if it's the Heimerdinger's fault. I don't know if there's a single AD carry that would be able to withstand on this onslaught, right? They'd need, what, at least a damaged jungler or top. Preferably, I think, the jungle at the very minimum. The Xin Zhao would be fantastic. But that's for the next game. As of this game, it's still pretty much GMU's side. They just have to decide when and where they're going to end it. You would almost need, you know, kind of one of the old season three season four classic ad carries there just with you know, the, the, even the old items built out of just you know all, all sorts of armor kind of traditional last whisper and you know everything's fun there to really challenge what you're looking at here with george mason and unfortunately is that doesn't exist in the current build of the game not going to be something that case you can really start to bring to the table here so the bot lane tower has already fallen off only 22 and a half minutes into this game, though it does feel later. It feels like it's been going on longer. Just because George Mason had such a dominant start to this early game. We've had a very kill-saturated game. More kills in this one than in this draft tick five. Another tower falls. This time, only the inner turrets remaining for the likes of Kennesaw State. And based on death's door, still plenty of Baron time. Bobby goes through wants to go, and they want to find GG. He can 2v1 right now, and does so with a bomb. And that's a fight breaking out the top side as well. Enrique is there to represent, and slays DKC. The tower goes down as well. Aaron not going to be able to do much here. And that's actually the run out from Vanquish. He's just leaving his base in shambles, trying to save the scoreboard there. But they know that there's nothing they can do to save this game. Vanquish is going to be taken out of that one. Enrique finds the inhibitor. Now it's just having trying to run in to delay this a few more seconds. But that is essentially going to do it. 23 and a half minutes. And George Mason are looking unstoppable there as they do continue to shut down the game. Ride it out. Ace! And the surrender triggers through before the actual game ends with the final tower. They knew there was no coming back for that one. The victory for George Mason as they take game number one and put themselves into a 1-0 lead in this series. That was... I, I hazard to say one-sided because it was a little more than that, right? It was a very, very good draft by GMU, and it was played incredibly well. All they had to do was shut down the Irelia. They did that early game. Then they took their champions, got their item spikes, and just won every fight, right? They lost basically one fight that entire game. And that was off the back of Irelia completely popping off and destroying their carries. Besides that, super clean game. So for the next one, KSU needs to take a look at their draft phase and they need to say, okay, do we have the ability to priority pick these champions? How can we get them? And can we bring a damaged jungler? I think the damaged jungler and getting a stronger top laner will be super critical in winning this series. Well, we'll see whether or not they can do it. We're going to the players just a couple quick seconds to reset here before we do get in to the second game and potentially the final game if George Mason can put up another performance like that in this best of three. We'll see how that all does work out. But in the meantime, we're going to kick it over to a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. 